Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you've all had a fantastic week. Uh, this week on the Aussie lawn, as things are cooling down a bit now, the leaves have finally started to turn. We've got a lot of yellow and golden leaves here. The mornings are getting very brisk. It was another uh, single digit temperature this morning, got down to two degrees. Uh, super, super light frost. Nothing really too serious. Uh, but yeah, just got a little bit of a mow on there. Still getting a reasonable amount of grass off this green. Uh, still not fully happy with the color, but I did a soil test during the week and I do have pH on the high side of things. So um, I'm gonna be looking into a few options how to deal with that. Obviously, I'm gonna look for some products that I can actually put into the Easy Flow system, uh, which will gradually uh, reduce the pH over time because obviously pH adjustment is something that happens over a long period of time um, it doesn't happen under one one application so uh, I'm gonna get some proper tests done things like that but my little chemical tests that you buy at Bunnings sort of indicated seven and a half which is I'd like to really see it six and a half or less or somewhere there so there's something to work on um, as time goes on now I thought what we do today is just have a little look around the grounds uh, I've got a big weekend ahead which you'll probably see next weekend. So I've got a big weekend out in the new front lawn project with Scott. So Scott will be here tomorrow. So you'll see that probably next week, I'd say. Um, but we'll have a little look at that, a little sneak preview of that as well in this episode. Um, I'll show you what's been happening if you've been watching the channel for a while. The Fish Pond Garden has had a little bit of action. Uh, we'll check out the buffalo, we'll check out the front lawn. And um, yeah, so we'll have a bit of a what's coming what's been happening sort of an episode. So let's start off. Let's have a look at our uh, little patches of Tiff Eagle and our zoysia patch. And uh, I'm still really amazed at the color in the zoysia, but let's check it out. Righto, so over in our little patch of zoysia here, uh, and I'll bring you up close there in a second. All these little patches are continuing to actually go really well. There is even some that have started to run. Now, that's pretty amazing considering that, you know, we're down to very cold nights, very cold mornings, uh, and that sort of thing. So I wasn't really expecting that. And the other thing I wasn't expecting was for it to still be as green and holding its color quite like it is. So really impressed with how it's performing so far. Um, I'm really surprised. I thought that it might've gone purple or discolored or done something by now. As I said, we've had about four or five frosts. Uh, they haven't been severe, but they've still been frosts. But this is still continuing to, uh, to creep, move and, and grow. So well done. Well done to the zoysia there for uh, handling these sort of conditions. But as I said, winter hasn't officially started yet and we've got a long time to go before we get too excited, but promising at this point in time. Okay, so no real surprises for me here with the Tiff Eagle. It's, uh, it's obviously covering over really, really well. Uh, I haven't actually ever cut this since I've planted it. I probably could have done, but again, because I planted it on top of the surface rather than in the, in the ground, uh, I wanted to sort of avoid scalping the tops off it. But now we've got all this area that's filled in I'd absolutely have no hesitations now of just scalping these little tufts off. Uh, and then there's absolutely no reason I couldn't just start hitting this with the cylinder mower and introduce regular mowing and basing it on the, the little runners throughout. But again, holding really, really good color. Um, so it'll give us a nice little nursery bed for uh, planting this out in spring, should we go with this, or hopefully we'll probably end up rolling with a zoysia and I might relocate this to somewhere else and just keep a bit on standby should I decide that I want to put Tiff Eagle somewhere. So ideally at this stage, I, I would love for my green to, to be that new zoysia. But as I said, if it does no good this season, in this winter time and stuff like that, this will be my fallback grass, the uh, the Tiff Eagle Bermuda slash Cooch, wherever you're watching from. So yeah, it's, it's progressed really, really well. Happy with that. Let's have a look now at the, uh, at the green. As I said in the intro, the green's not as good as it could be, but it's, it's about average for this time of year. Um, colors mediocre. Uh, again, winter, a little bit of a high pH situation, but we've got our ability to still get a bit of nutrient into the plant by using our liquid feed. So obviously, once again, the easy flow, it's so easy, you've got the stuff just set up there. Every time you walk past the hose, just grab it, turn it on, walk over your green, or walk over your lawn, and you're giving it a nice light feed. Um, so we'll, as I said, work on light liquid feeding, and uh, our soil soil health through the winter period. And uh, yeah, that plant doctor stuff is, is, is pretty good for tasks. So yeah, overall, look, not the best it's been. 
certainly not the worst it's been, uh, but it is it is what it is, and it's little projects like this that keep this channel ticking along. So this big there was a big pile of dirt here. You would have seen it in the background of a lot of my videos, um, and basically I got a bit of time up my sleeves, so I started to form it into the garden behind me here. So uh, basically what will happen is it's going to be a big uh, raised garden bed with uh, a bush rock front, which will also carry around to our our feature there, which is our uh, fish pond or eight foot cattle trough. Uh, and there's a bit of a water feature there and potentially we'll put some sort of fountain style uh, Feature in the middle of it as well. So we're we'll working on that as well this winter So I'll probably film a little bit of that as we go along as well uh, So a bit of an example here of what I was talking about. So we've got the big bush rocks here um, And obviously they'll hold in the soil and a garden bed will be Behind it there. So a few rocks over here a few rocks behind the camera uh, So yeah, when I get a bit of time We'll start, uh, I'll start forming it in and it should turn out pretty well I think. Okay, so you probably wouldn't have noticed till I pointed it out to you. So this device tucked in here is a, uh, a float valve. So I have actually connected this up to the uh, to the main water system. So I don't actually have to top this up when the level drops. This will automatically um, kick in and keep the level just right so that that's a great low maintenance sort of thing and you'll see here the mesh uh, just to keep things safe for kids and stuff like that we don't want anyone having any any injuries so the water level will obviously uh, come above that mesh but within regulations right so naturally when you've got a pond um, you're always going to want to have people being able to see and get it around as much as is possible so through this section here I'm going to use the uh, a bit more of this decomposed granite which is the same stuff that I used out the front in the Garden of Tranquility so I'll make a circular pathway that goes just after halfway around the side of the tank that gives everyone all the way around the front all around this side uh, and I'll put some sort of feature weeping tree over the back of it there uh, and again our rocks will retain the soil on this side righto so that's our little pond our little pond garden tour at this stage no fish in here obviously it's just horrible green water that'll be cleaned out and obviously once the proper pump goes in then we'll worry about filtration and so forth. But just for today, for demonstrations, I've just got that connected to the to the town water, just to give you the idea of the effect. So I reckon it looks pretty cool. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Right, eh, we'll move on now to our buffalo and had a really good response to that slow release fertilizer. So you would have seen a few episodes ago now, I put down my last feed for the winter, which was a slow release champion. It was actually a mini prill fertilizer from Plant Doctor. And look, I think it's looking pretty good. As I said, it's four frosts in now and uh, still holding really good color. It's not growing a great deal. I've only mowed it that one time with the with the 60 volt Toro there. But uh, yeah, look, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's sitting at the moment. So we'll yeah. check out the front here now. And I haven't really done a great deal on the front this season with you guys. There's just really not much to show you. It's, it's actually pretty good. It's holding fantastic color for the end of May. So today, I think it's the 28th of May, it's holding fantastic color. Uh, still growing slightly, uh, so really happy with that. No real issues with any winter grass touch wood. Uh, I haven't yet had to use any pre-emergence. I haven't had to do anything like that. So I'm sort of blessed in that regard. I do have some wayward ryegrass popping up though from about two or three seasons ago now when I was doing the rye overseed. And even though I've sprayed it with Monument several times, some still does come back and um which is kind of surprising so it's lasted all hot summers it's done all that sort of stuff so don't under underestimate the ryegrass because uh it can not necessarily be as easy to get rid of as you think but with saying that it doesn't always make the great lawn in the warm climate either so it's one of those catch-22 things um but yeah this front lawn she's looking pretty good one of the biggest things that particularly cooch growers or cooch owners can face though in winter time particularly is shade now i'll show you an area here now that's not huge in the way that it's not a huge bush it's not a huge garden and the affected shaded area is not huge in itself but cooch is a sun lover and it really wants at least five plus hours of direct sunlight every day to perform at its best now the area that i've got there is on the north is on the north side so technically casting a shadow to make it the southern side of the lawn so never gets any or enough sun in the winter time because the sun moves around to the north and creates shade areas that way so things that you can do there you could raise mowing height that would be one way to combat it 
obviously cut back your bushes uh, to allow more light in or um, even if you've got a large large area probably consider a whole different variety of grass um, or even wintering winter time oversow they're all options so a rye oversow perhaps all these things can um, alleviate patches in the winter but yeah it just shows how little how quickly sorry cooch will degrade when it doesn't get enough sunshine since we're last here we've had a little bit more action had a lot of work done now the reason i didn't film a lot of this stuff is it was sort of last minute and we basically work through till dark so uh, as i said scott's coming tomorrow so give me opportunity to do a little bit more filming as we go but basically so far uh, from here up to my driveway we've pretty much just roughly put in our uh, sand here so i've got actually a coarse river sand on this occasion um, a little bit limited at the moment with what i can get my hands on um, basically due to the floods that we had so this stuff will be okay it's fairly coarse so it'll be very very good draining uh, but obviously four inches beneath that i've got that really rich healthy black soil that's going to hold some nutrients so the roots will get through this nicely good aeration in theory hit that other stuff so we should be right i don't have any real concerns about it um, it'll be fine for what we're doing here also got our irrigation put in along the street which is our little pop-up hunter spray so they're the rectangle pattern suitable for these narrow narrow strips and i've also got my uh, hunter pgp ultra gear dry sprinklers along the other side uh, and i'll take you guys through some more irrigation stuff in the next episode so i haven't done all the irrigation there's still stuff that i'm going to share with you it's just at the moment i just had to push on when i could push on and film when i can film so that's what's sort of happening i'll give you a little look around now and um That'll be our episode, guys. it up again for another week here on the Aussie lawn I've got to go and throw this into some sort of video for you guys now because I've got today before it's due tomorrow so I'll crack on I hope you've enjoyed it stay tuned for next week with more front lawn update we'll see you next time here on the Aussie lawn <laughs>